Baradavin Bubul Revev, Sit Mahdunu de Ripod, Ron Idui, Vien Krater of Murn. Good morning, my strange people. How's your day been? I. Rowan, and welcome to my spooky home. And uh, this is going to be a little bit different because uh, um, usually when I. Uh, film something from the TV. Uh, because I'm not, I don't have my TV plugged into my thing. I don't usually watch, um, TV shows from the computer because I am an old man. <laughs> uh, and much like Reagan, I'm an old man who dyes his hair. But, <laughs> but that's another story for another time. So anyway, <clears throat> I've gone on at length on my radio show about how the Irish love Tom Waits. Like, um, at least according to the, um, 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 last time I checked Wikipedia anyway, um, Ireland is the only country in the world where every single one of Tom Waits' albums has been in, like, you know, the, uh, their, uh, their top 100 for the year, um, this is the only country in the world where Tom Waits' first album ever charted, even charted at all. And I think it was in their top 10 album sales for that year. <clears throat> now, remember, Tom Waits is American. He's based out of California, I believe, most of his career. Um, I don't remember... Uh, what he said about his ethnic background, but he he's very American. He's, um, as far as, you know, I think he's, uh, but yeah, like his accent, very American. He grew up in the States, in California of all places, like arguably one of the most American places one can grow up because culturally it's so, um, it's not so far removed from, um, what can I say? It's not so far removed from the various ethnic backgrounds that are very, that are very common to California, but at the same time, um, it's so, the, the take on the, um, Let's say California whiteness is so unique compared to other parts of the U.S., right? Like, you can see in, um, in the Midwest how, how, um, how German and Slavic and even Irish backgrounds really influenced, um, you know, you get a lot of Catholicism that, you know, forms the back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you get a lot of, like, uh, Catholics and Lutherans and um, Anglican Episcopals who, uh, you know, really forming the backbone of Midwestern culture. It's, yeah, Midwestern culture is very Catholic-oriented. And, yeah, there's a lot of Catholics in California, but most of the Catholics in California come, you know, are influenced by Mexican culture. And, and, Mex and Mexico, Mesoamerica, South America, uh, you know, like, um, not Mesoamerica, like Central and South America, American Catholic Catholicism is a very different animal from, uh, from European-influenced Roman Catholicism, right? I mean, yeah, technically the churches of, you know, the countries is the Roman Catholic Church. But, um, yeah, like I said, it's... it it They do their own thing there. They do their own thing there. You see this very... You know, you, know, you see this in Mexico a lot with um, uh, Dia de los Muertos, um, Day of the Dead, which, yeah, it was uh, placed on um, the uh, the Catholic um, Eve of All Hallows, right? The... the, the Mm. And of course, November first being All Saints Day, but you know, like much like Halloween has picked up, mm, 
um, very Celtic traditions. Um, and the U.S. has done its own thing with Halloween. But, um, but yeah, uh, and I know Day of the Dead is not the same thing as Halloween. I, I think it's either the 30th of October or maybe it's like the second day of November. I, it's, it's something. But it's close enough and, you know, you do see, like, Dia de los Muertos, you know, like, out in California, um, as both a Mexican thing, and you see, like, the ways that it'll cross over with, um, Halloween in California, and it's, like I said, it's, it's very unique, it's uniquely Catholic, right, it's, it's its own culture, that's why I say that, like, California, and to some extent, Nevada, um, and New Mexico, th these are uniquely American takes on, you know, on, on even just white culture, right? Um, so, you know, when I say Tom Waits is very American, I say, you know, and yeah, you still see a lot of the ways in the New England states that um, the culture of the British Isles and to a lesser extent... Um, uh, um, to a lesser extent, um, um, France and Germany, but, you know, then again, like, it's called New England for a reason, you know, you see, you still see that there, that, you know, there are ways, I've got a friend from, um, the Boston area, now, now, they're not from Boston proper, but they're from the Boston area, like, they're from one of the suburb types that, has managed to stay a halfway reasonable rent price, right? And uh, and and she <laughs> and and she can go on at length about New England culture, and you know, um, and you do see a bit of um, you do see a lot of English and German influence in Pennsylvania culture. You still see a lot of French culture in the. Uh, in the U.S. South, you know, like the Gulf states, you see a lot of that. Um, um, Florida, I would also say, like, Florida is probably uniquely American um, in a way, but it's the way that even white Americans don't like to talk about, right? But, uh, but yeah, California, like, when you get to, like, the whole, like, ideals of white America, California is this really interesting, very much, you know, it's a uniquely American microcosm of white culture, but there, I digress. So, as I said, I go on about Tom Waits, because he grew up in California, so, like I said, but there's something about Tom Waits that, um, that, that the Irish just love. He can really tap into, um, the Irish spirit in a way, much the same way that uh, the Beatles tapped into something um, unique about um, the uh, the American-born um, baby boomer generation when in their teens in the early 1960s. Um, you know, the teens and young 20-somethings some things in the early 1960s. The Beatles actually sold better in the uni in the United States than they did in England. Um, for the longest time, um, the Beatles were number one for um, number one singles. So singles that had hit the number one on the Billboard charts. The Beatles had 20 in the States for the longest time, whereas Elvis was ranked number two with 18. But... In the UK, those numbers were reversed. It was like 20 or 21 for Elvis, but 18 for the Beatles. <laughs> so, yeah, like the Beatles tapped into something very uniquely, um, very uniquely baby boomer teen era, you know, um, like even when they got into their more experimental stage, which is like, the, you know, where they... The, the singles sold less well, but the albums sold a little bit better because um, Sgt. Pepper was the first um, such album that really tapped into this um, idea that Gavin Friday 
once said about David Bowie's uh, Ziggy Stardust album, which is that it's a concept album with the concept removed. Like, um, in fact, like Sgt. Pepper's was probably the first big album to even touch on the concept album concept. So it's like when you listen to the to the um, to the album to the songs as part of an album, you can see these themes linking them. Um, but most, if not every single one of the songs, also stands alone as a great song as its as its own, right? Um, you know, Ziggy Stardust, we can say that about, we can say that about, like, um, we can say that about almost every single David Bowie album, but the Ziggy Stardust albums really hit that nail on the head. Well, Ziggy Stardust and, the Ziggy Stardust albums and Diamond Dogs. Diamond Dogs. Oh. Mm, I'll, mm, I'll say Diamond Dogs leans a little bit more towards concept album, but, um, but the songs are still pretty solid on their own. Um, and when I say Ziggy Stardust albums, I'm also including the, uh, the, the Ziggy Stardust Returns, which would be, um, Earthling, Outsider, and Brain Fart, Brain Fart, Brain Fart. But, yeah, like, there, 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 there are two kinds of David Bowie fans. Those who agree that there was a Ziggy Stardust Returns, you know, um, in the, um, mid-90s with, uh, Earthling, Outsider, and I'm brain farting. Um, and those who are wrong. But I digress. Because, you know, like, a lot of the themes are very much similar, but at the same time, it's like, it's nostalgic, but also sort of cynical, but also sort of, um, but also sort of cautiously optimistic. Right? So, uh, so yeah. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, like, Stephen Colbert just hit on something, as he described in last night's um, Late Show with Stephen Colbert. He hit on something while he's describing the film Belfast that I think is exactly why Tom Waits is so huge in Ireland. <laughs> uh, that, you know... It's funny, and it's sad, and it's funny about being sad, but sadness doesn't have to, you know, be the end of everything. That, you know, it can, it can be just another stage that we're living in. Someone asked me earlier what movie did I really enjoy this year, and I said, well, I really like Belfast, which is kind of Brana's story of his childhood. And one of the reasons I love it is that I'm Irish, and uh, Irish-American, and it's such an Irish movie, um, and I think this is also a Catholic thing because it's it's funny and it's sad, and it's funny about being sad. In the same way, that sadness is like a little bit of an emotional death, but not a defeat if you can find a way to laugh about it. Because that laughter keeps you from having fear of it, and fear is the thing that keeps you from turning to evil devices to save you from the sadness. As Robert Hayden said, we must not be frightened or controlled into accepting evil as our deliverance from evil. We must keep struggling to maintain our humanity. The monsters are not strapped. Goddamn. So if there's some relationship My hands are in such shit shape. It's that no matter what happens, you are never defeated. You must understand and see this in the light of eternity and find some way to love and laugh with each other. And that, I think, is exactly why Tom Waits is so big in Ireland. Because, you know, you listen... Hi. You, uh, you listen to his music and he touches on so many of those themes. Like throughout the album, but also with individual songs, like way back, you know, um, you know, like way back to his first album before his balls dropped, right? <laughs> you know, which is also kind of like, kind of like how you can describe David Bowie's, um, voice, you know, as a singer, right? You know, like there was like his first five albums and then his balls dropped. <laughs> Even though like David Bowie has always been a tenor and Tom Waits has always been a baritone bass, um, but yeah, uh, so yeah, like they, they did like five albums and then their balls dropped. <laughs> I'm so horrible. I'm horrible. I am, but, um, I'm also adorable. So, uh, but yeah, yeah. And that, and, um, so yeah, like that's, that's something that you see recurrent in Tom Waits music so often is that, 
you know, there's this sadness and this melancholy, but he can be kind of funny about it at the same time. And oddly, that's also, like, why, like, that, like, like, that, like, like, that melancholy humor uh, can also be, like, why Morrissey is the reason why I pirate Morrissey's music. Now, I'm not telling you to go and pirate Morrissey's music. Um, this is not me advocating such things, but... <laughs> but it's uh yeah it's just a fact about Morris about my relationship with Morrissey's music but I digress um and yet like Morrissey is not as big in Ireland as he is in other places N nor is he as big in Ireland as Tom Waits is but then again who is ah, probably a bunch of people but the Irish love Tom Waits and <laughs> um Stephen Colbert's description of this Kenneth Branagh, Kenneth Branagh movie uh, just really hit the nail on the head um, right now to me about why the Irish love Tom Waits. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's, that's, a, very, that's a very Irish Catholic thing. Um, and so, of course, of course, like, that would make sense about Tom Waits' music because, you know, he's sad and he's funny and he's funny about being sad. And he doesn't, you know, but even, like, at his saddest, there's this, he has this way of not letting it be a defeat, but just being another part of life. And, hi, yes, we all see her now. We all see her now, and he's a goofy little floofball. Yep, there he is. There he is. He is so, so silly. Aren't you? Manow. Manow. You. Yes, you are a goofball. Don't deny it. All right. Well, as always, Vimble Bulgrevev, um, wear your sunscreen. Otherwise, take very good care of yourselves. And, um,. Have exactly the kind of day you deserve. If you found any of this stuff that I said even halfway entertaining, I'm probably going to get a copyright, you know, um, demonetization for the Colbert clip there that I did very jankily on my phone. But that, you know, so, uh, so, like I said, if you found any of this at least mildly entertaining, I've got the PayPal tip jar. Um, you can go check out my other social media, um, accounts and follow me around, and maybe check out my music, maybe buy some music, um, maybe, um, at least, I don't know, but, um, crap and stuff, um, and, uh, and as always, if you have more dollars than cents, but I'm ching, um, I've got, a Patreon where you can give me, um, a little bit of cash, Every month at varying levels where I do occasionally, like, do, um, I'm not on a schedule right now, but I do occasionally, like, um, do the, do the, um, tier perks that I promised I would, and, um, and speaking of people who are on Patreon, um, who have more dollars than cents, or something to that effect. We've got uh, a shout-out right now, and at least, you know, the uh, the first 25, let's say, are grandfathered in. I will always give y'all a shout-out, which includes um, S Susie Bika, Canadian illustrator and graphic artist who has been commissioned by Green Party Canada and done some gallery shows in the Toronto area. Then we've got Ali Valkyrie, American expat living in France, um, uh, polytheist and anti-capitalist blogger, one of the editors of uh, Gods and Radicals, and, um, and also Karen L., who's just a very sweet lady who found me on YouTube and decides to give me her money every month. And then the money becomes mine. And, um, yeah, right now, at least 
ha- uh, yeah, at least seven out of the nine dollars I'm getting on Patreon is going to support people on Patreon who I give monetary support to because I'm a dumbass who, uh, <laughs> cause I'm a dumbass who supports other artists and musicians and writers and commentators and all of that. Um, yeah. All right. I think I'm done. Um, bats and kisses. Nosta Aquil. <laughs>